The Wakandans didn't seem too happy with Bucky for busting Zemo out of prison last week, and this week they come for him, but things don't go exactly as planned. Now that Carly's shown she's not afraid to get her hands dirty, John Walker goes a little off the rails and the stakes are now definitely a bit higher. And although it's a little light this week, there are still the usual callbacks and nods to the existing Marvel Universe. Greetings folks, I'm Greg Elliott with Screen Rant, and here are all the Marvel references and Easter eggs we found in Episode 4 of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You are free. We know that Steve took the Winter Soldier to Wakanda to have his Hydra programming removed, and in this episode we got a peek of how that all went down. It wasn't easy, and according to the Avengers Infinity War prelude comic, they put Bucky in cryogenic suspension for months while Shuri figured out how to do it. And this episode reveals that they were still working on him just a few months before Infinity War. After condemning this latest action, the GRC formally began drafting legislation known as the Patch Act. Moving to the present, last week's GRC bombing had the opposite effect the Flag Smashers were hoping for, so the attempts to reimpose national borders are now being accelerated rather than being slowed down. And apparently this is in accordance with the Patch Act, which itself is not a direct Easter egg, but possibly a subtle way to reference Madripoor's most famous resident in the comics, Patch. And who is Patch, you might ask? Well. That'd be the alias of none other than James Howlett, AKA Logan, AKA the Wolverine, who took to wearing an eye patch as an admittedly feeble disguise while laying low in Madripoor. Aggressive, but I get it. Captain America carrying handcuffs isn't a nod to the comics, but there was an official utility belt toy back in the 70s that had a pair included, along with a communicator, decoder goggles, a watch, a secret decoder map, and a Captain America ID card, just in case the outfit and the shield weren't enough to prove it. Sam insists on treating Carly as a wounded human being rather than a supervillain and calls her just a kid, like Steve did about Scarlet Witch in Captain America Civil War. John Walker clearly does not see her as such though and finally gets his hands on some serum and becomes the super soldier he's always wanted to be, although in a very different way from the comics where he was experimented on by the power broker. He's clearly not fully in control though, as he throws and wedges his shield into a wall by accident, unlike how Steve did it on purpose in Civil War. Let's come back to that lack of control in a minute though, because we just want to call out the return of Bucky's sweet knife flipping skills from the Winter Soldier, although this time he uses them to get rid of the weapon rather than to attack. What's with all the knives? Okay, now back to the crazy Captain America. The biggest scene in the episode shows John Walker totally losing it on one of the Flag Smashers. Once again, not showing the restraint that Steve Rogers did in Civil War, and once again proving that he's not really worthy of the shield. This was also kind of similar to a scene from the Secret Empire comics, where an evil version of Steve Rogers killed Black Widow. In the comics, the repercussions of that lasted for years as the world struggled to accept the real Steve after he came back. So Sam may end up having a difficult time trying to redeem the name of Captain America after John Walker has dragged it through the mud. With an unhinged, superpowered John Walker, Carly Morgenthau still on the loose, and the power broker after her too, we've got a lot of ground to cover with only two episodes left. But we'll be here to keep you looped in as the show reaches its end, so come back to us at Screen Rant to stay up to speed. I'm Greg Elliott, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace.